So I'm taking a look at making a crease, the main crease plate. This is going to be uh, have a, another plate up the top here, which is why it's got this scallop on. What I want to do is look at this at a beginner's level. So I'm going to do it stage by stage by stage. So it's going to build up um, over time um, as I as I get to it. It's not going to be one lengthy video. But what I'm going to do is try and really knuckle down on what's going on in my mind uh, and why I'm doing what I'm doing, starting with the pattern. Now, measurements and patterns, people always ask uh, all the time on, on the web and so on, well, I think you've got a pattern for this, got a pattern for that. Well, there you go. There you go. That's the pattern that I use for this crease. That is basically, take the circumference. Now, this is a big, big guy. All right, this is about six foot one. And, um, but basically, take your measurements and it doesn't quite work out like this, but it gets you going. Is take the circumference, so that's just above the knee. Imagine the polyne is going to be here. That's just above the knee. And the groin's about there. All right, and we're going, to, we're going up a little bit. Now remember, crease don't go, well, they do in certain types of styles, but generally a thigh plate is not the size of the entirety of the thigh, otherwise you can't bend your leg. Um, you can't lift it up and just see that there. I'm just checking on the camera. You can't do that sort of movement with your thigh because you'd end up with metal uh, marring the way. So consider that. So there's a straight line in the pattern from north to south. I've got that one there. I've got the width across there. Draw your lines and there is your basic scallop shape for a crease. All right? It's not too difficult. Give it a go and there's loads of patterns online and so on. So, right, I'm going to take a few moments about cutting and setting the pattern up. Now, obviously, like I say, I'm doing this right from the beginning. I, I've, I've, I've had, um, I've seen, shall I say, people take a pattern, stick it in the middle of their material and cut to it and then just leave everything else around there. Obviously, you want to work your way around the edges and in. I, this is square when I started, but generally as well, what I tend to do is keep the work on the length along the whole length of it when I'm making my patterns and sort of crunch my way across because then that means I've always got a long length material should I ever need it. So this pattern here, to save myself some time cutting, I think this one's Rice Krispies, I can't remember. But um, what I'm going to do is rather than have the, that side, I have the decorative side to the top so I can put this long edge on this straight edge because this is the manufactured straight edge so I know that's a nice straight edge. All right, just line that up. There we go. Can't come right down there because I've done some cutting here look, and marked it up, but that's the way it goes. So rather than have the short edge, which then means I've got to try and cut the longer edge, flip it over and go. Because it doesn't matter which way around the pattern is because I can just flip the steel later. Uh, and just draw it in. And what happens a lot of the time, my Sharpies are on their last legs. Oh, it's just come to life. In a moment. is often give the surface a wipe because it's like a waxy coat on it and it kills your pens. There we go. And what I do as well, I'm become a slave for this mark. I think I said that before. The pattern. There's a lot of room for error in metal work. As long as it fits, you can always make it a bit tighter or a bit looser. So don't pan it. And you know what? If you make your pattern and it turns out wrong, there's nothing lost because you'll know within five minutes of starting the work. All right? So just be man enough to admit your pattern's wrong and redo it, which I've had to do numerous times. I'm a bit nervous of this one because it's for a big guy and I haven't done one this large before. Sometimes you can just guess it, but this guy is considerably larger than taller than my previous customers. So, all that line is in there, it's just so I don't get lost as I'm making stuff, so I know what's going on. These clips here, or I've clipped that, right, you don't need to. You can just take it to a sharp point and cut it later. It's just when I was first shown how to make one of these, back in, goodness me, can't remember when, there's no date on it. Uh, this was the crease plate I've shown. Now, what I was going to say about patterns and the way they change. Dave, who showed me how to make this, what he does is he scallops the edges down here. You can see I haven't. Because of the way I, I make it, 
bit different the way that Dave makes it. I tend to find it easier to put that in. It gives me more room for error. Whereas Dave was that experienced, didn't need that room for error. He just got straight onto it. Um, I, I just find it easier to do it like this. And then cut those out if they're necessary to aid with the movement or to trim up so you haven't got dirty, great jagged edges in your legs. And it also helps a bit here because you can see uh, what bits coming forward and back later. Whereas I have to mark that in when I'm going. So you can see this pattern has changed over the years from the way I was shown, which I worked with for a number of years and then slowly started to find an easier way for myself, to this pattern. And you could just take those off there later. And the patterns begin to look a bit different uh, from one another. So getting bogged down in patterns and patterning, um, I think could be a waste of your time sometimes. Just give it a whirl, give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? Try to have a bit of plasticine first, even a big old piece on your leg. You know, work it round on your leg, see if it works and it fits. Hey ho! I've seen um, cosplayers do it an awful lot. Wrap their um, limbs in um, polythene and then masking tape, cut it off, and then they've got a vague pattern. You know, it can be a big help. It can help. There's nothing wrong with trying those techniques to begin with uh, and seeing where you end up. So, I'm going to get this cut and then we'll see where we're at. Now, when I start thinking about cutting this, I've got to start thinking about where am I going to go, what's going to happen. Now I'm using these, and I've done a review for these, Makita um, uh, power shears. Uh, the, the best tool of this type I've ever used. Uh, you've got the versatility of the, um, of the shears, a uh, nice cut and strength of a power tool. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. In my humble opinion. When I started, these will do the job. You can get through 16 with these, just about. He says, I'm doing an NPC, it'll be easier. The picture. Ah, he said, there you go. But, I remember, oh, as was the thing back in the day, about spoulders being your first jobs. And I cut these spoulders out of some 16 gauge that I had, all by hand, using a pair of these sorts of things. They nearly killed me, frankly. Uh, which is why I quickly went to a power shear. Another thing to consider, which I don't do a lot of, is, I mean this chisel one works, it's blunt. Plain. Here's a chisel. It's a cold chisel. Knock it down work it backwards and forwards to snap the piece out and then you can trim it later but you know that's why I've got one of these don't need one of these big ones you can get the smaller ones but that's why I've got this but what we've got to think about is how am I going to cut this you know, if I start trying to trim this off here and going up there and then doing this I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of hard work for myself but this bit I can trim off later so I can go one two just those two cuts and then cut the edges off and trim that that's simple um, I know it's a bit like teaching a lot of people on here to sort of suck eggs, but you know when you're starting out, these things can save you time, effort, energy, and um, a lot of annoyance as well. So always plan your cutting, even just two seconds before you start doing it in your mind. Sometimes this happens, sometimes it doesn't. But something that's worth remembering at the minute is hot weather, so I'm in shorts. Um, and even with jeans, this can be painful. I've got a lot of sharp edges on this. If I go cutting that and just letting it fall to the floor, it's rare it happens, but it can happen. It will dig a hole in your leg. I've had one bad one, which I've still got scars from, uh, where it hit me straight in the shin bone and then just sort of went clunk and then comically just sort of slipped down. But it wasn't quite so comic at the time. So if you can, just leave it like that. You see, it's still attached. Work it around. There we go. I'm not trying to sort of Jackie Chan my way out of time. Lots of material everywhere. So now we can just trim those last bits up, and suddenly it's a lot easier. Eminently simpler. I saw that as I was trying to put the cutters on, 
jumping about. There's a couple of ways you can avoid that. You can secure this to a workbench. Um, I just find you spend more time securing it uh, than you do actually getting on. Well, another way is to hold the tool against your hip. Now, I'm not talking about putting your leg in front of the cutting action here. I'm just talk about resting it on your hip, resting the work. Resting the work on there, try not to pinch yourself between the anvil and the metal because that smarts a bit. Um, rest the metal on there or on your hip again and just obviously be sensible, don't draw the work further and further back here. Um, you're just one slip away from a, a very interesting trip to the hospital. So, um, not so much jumping about. Sometimes you can't quite get it there, but you just jump around. And as you get more and more used to the work, you know, 99 times out of 100, you can hold it here and it will just cut it. And then every now and then it'll go, and you'll end up with a hole. You just have to abandon ship and away you go. But like I say, the, the plan behind this is really to take it nice and slow and steady. All of my thoughts, everything I'm thinking, sort of like a life brain feed to what's going on as to why, uh, what I'm doing as I'm making it. I've got to say at the beginning, the material I'm using here is 16 gauge mild steel. I prefer to do these sorts of things with mild steel because it's forgiving if my mind goes off because I'm trying to think of what to say next uh, and so on. So there you go, there's a quick over, uh, overview, probably about 10, 10 minutes or so, on what goes from my patterning, cutting your patterns and getting the steel ready for the next phase, which is the beginning of the work. And we'll move on to that um, sort of straight away. I want to build this in a series so you're not hunting your way through um, sort of you know, hour and a half long videos um, so we'll see how we go so there you go, that's the end of that one and we'll move on to the next one in just a minute